I was a drunk, an addict, and a thief. But don't worry, because the story gets better. It started in my parents' home. They would drink out of these little glasses, get drunk. Then they would sing and dance and have what appeared to be so much fun. I was left to clean up behind them the following morning. That wasn't much fun for me. There would always be a smidgen of alcohol left in these little glasses. I wondered, if I drink what was left in the glasses, would I be as happy and joyful and free as they were? So began my life with alcohol. I would drink and dance and sing until I fell out. I was in a bad relationship. I was hurting on the inside, smiling on the outside, filled with a lot of pain. A friend told me I would feel better if I took a little sniff of this white powder. I sniffed and my pain went away. I stopped hurting. It was heroin. Each day I sniffed the heroin to keep the pain away. One day I looked up. I was addicted. I started stealing to buy the heroin. I had to feed the monkey on my back. With the heroin came jail time and time again. But I turned to Narcotics Anonymous to help me. I got clean in jail. I got my GED in prison. When I got out, I went back to school and I got my bachelor's degree in public health education. I was hired by Community Family Life Services and the Speakers Bureau to tell my story and to work with female returning citizens. These women were going through some of the same devastation, the same low points, and the same trauma that I experienced as a street person. I knew the way out. I knew the way out. So it's my job to reach back and pull another sister up. That's what gender responsive justice is all about. Developing and delivering programs designed to meet the specific needs of incarcerated and recently released women. Research has shown that gender-responsive approaches result in increased motivation, less recidivism, brighter futures for women than all those programs primarily designed for men just slapped onto the women without regard for their well-being. Diane's job is to find those women who still seem lost on the streets. She does it one woman at a time. Let me tell you about Gail. She is a lovely person with a giving heart. Gail didn't have a substance abuse disorder problem, but she would solicit her body on the streets. She would go to jail for short stints. She came into my program that works with HIV clients. That's a big problem in women's prisons. Incarcerated women are 36% more likely than non-incarcerated women to contract HIV AIDS. They will need ongoing health assistance. Diane makes sure they get that and a lot more. I started talking to Gail about working because she had a history of work. I referred her to Community Family Life Services Job Development Office. She eventually was hired as a special security guard in government buildings. Now she's starting classes for first time home buyers. She will get that house. These women come from a place where abuse and addiction are rapid. It is next to impossible to find their way out. The government can't do it all. Many government programs don't have the flexibility and even the nonprofit organizations cut a woman out of her re-entry journey. They don't want to take the risk. But my clients are powerful women, not merely survivors, but thrivers. 
they are fighting against something so much bigger than what they can take care of themselves. They need women like you in this room to help them through re-entry. Housing is the most significant thing. We know if you don't have a place to live, you go right back to what you knew, which is the street. And the lifestyle you left behind for prison starts all over again. So at CFLS, they help place women in beds. They have seven transitional houses right now with more on the way. And we give them a change of clothing from our clothing bank. And CFLS gives them a starter kit. It's small, but it's just that, a start. My greatest hope is that women I have worked for, believe me when I say, you can do this thing. Yeah, you can do this thing. But look, I've been around more decades than I want to talk about. This is hard work, but please think about it. Women are the glue that holds our society together. When we pull one sister up, we pull up whole families and even communities. Every day I can see how helping one woman can create more opportunities for generations to come. I'm glad to be a part of that. Thank you.